Hello and welcome to the Grace Good News Podcast. I am Timothy, and it's time for some more good news. So today is episode number 22, and I've titled this one, Forgiveness and Our Identity, Part 3, You Have Been Washed. So I'm continuing uh, this little series I started with uh, forgiveness and our identity. Excuse me, I have been talking about forgiveness for some time now. Oh, I think uh, since like episode 15, I want to say. So uh, I am continuing uh, that same theme. And I will be for a little while longer. So I just kind of wanted to give you a little heads up there on that. Definitely want to um, just encourage you with the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. And, you know, one way, you know, in one way it's very simple to understand that we're forgiven. Uh, sin's not held against us. But I think it's really good to take time to delve into that and how it affects our lives uh, in different ways. And, you know, because I'm, I'm going to move on and I will talk about our identity more. Uh, I'll talk about, um, you know, of course, Christ's life within us. I mean, there is more to the gospel than just forgiveness. And I kind of talked about that uh, at the beginning of the last podcast when I was sharing about um, how we were purified. So, you know, and this is good news, though. We, we definitely want to uh, be delving in and um, absorbing the truth that just uh, encourage our hearts and sets us free. I mean, Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and that's good news. So the truth is, child of God, you are forgiven, totally forgiven, past, present, and future of all of your sins. Well, that's good news, but isn't that going to lead to more sinning? Absolutely not. Um, there's different passages we can go to that will share, uh, that, that clearly say, actually, it's the grace of God. Um, that discourages sin. So, in other words, um, as we understand that we're forgiven as a free gift, a gift of grace, uh, that actually gives us uh, the victory over sin. It doesn't encourage sin. It gives us victory over sin. Like in Romans 6, for example, uh, Paul says, uh, let's see, uh, I apologize, I have this ready. I think verse, um, is it 16? Oh, uh, 14, I'm sorry, there we go. I apologize, <laughs> Romans 6, 14. Uh, Sin shall not be master over you as a Christian, for you are not under law, but under grace. So if you were under law, sin would have be master over you, but you're not under law, for you died to the law so that you might live to God. That's what happened in salvation. Uh, we died to the law, we died to our old selves died, and we were uh, raised along with Christ in his resurrection. So we, we shared in Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. So when we were raised to newness of life, um, we were uh, born again, and we are new creations. We have a new heart and a new spirit. Um, you know, I'll teach on that later on in another time, but um, the important thing there is that we are under grace now. So we, we were married to, we became married to Jesus. We became united to Jesus Christ. For those who join themselves to the Lord are one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians 6.17, Paul tells us that there. Um, we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And there's other, other verses that talk about this idea of being one with Christ or being in Christ and Christ being in us. So as a Christian, we are under grace. So that's why sin won't be dominion over us. So back to my original point, we'll uh, well, grace, or the idea that we're totally forgiven, which you know is <laughs> is God's grace, um, and it's beautiful being a, being given to us as a free gift, uh, total forgiveness of all of our sins, because Jesus died once; He's never to die again. Um, in fact, in Hebrews 9, it talks about how when Jesus returns, it will not be in reference to sin, but in reference to salvation. So we know that Jesus came once and died on the cross and was crucified one time only and he's the perfect sacrifice so there's no need for a repeat so that's what that's why we know that we're totally forgiven because there's no more offer there's no more sacrifices for sin because the sacrifice of Christ worked the first time and that's why he sat down Hebrews 10:12 says he sat down after having offered a sacrifice for sins he sat at the right hand of God so he took away our sins uh, forever. Actually, I have that pulled up, so I'm going to share it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. But he, Christ, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God. So it was 
one sacrifice for sins for all time sat down at the right hand of God so he sat down because his work was finished he took away our sins and it was it was finished there's no more need for a repeat so that's our guarantee of total forgiveness it's good news uh, just to highlight that too um, in, to, or to, to go a little deeper with that same point right in Hebrews 10 uh, two verses later I just read verse 12 and now here's verse 14 he says for by one offering Jesus he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. So who's sanctified? Well, we are as Christians. Uh, we, we just read that actually in verse 10, which I didn't read here. But verse 10 says we've been sacrificed, uh, sanctified. <laughs> we're not sacrificed. We're sanctified through the body of Christ. So I'll read that verse so we can kind of get this bigger picture. So Hebrews 10, 10 says, By this will, what's that? The will of God that Jesus would... Um, come to die take away our sins right so by this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all so we have been sanctified now go down fast forward to verse 14 for by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified so we know in verse 10 we are sanctified and verse 14 is saying we have been perfected as well through the one offering of Jesus Christ. So if we have been perfected once for all time, then it only makes sense that, of course, we would have to be forgiven as well, or we wouldn't be um, perfected. So you can't you can't perfect an unforgiven uh, person, because <laughs> they would still be sinful and imperfect, right? So, no, Christ took away our sins and perfected us once for all time. doesn't mean we don't commit sins. Of course, we still do. Um, especially while we're on this planet, you know, we have five senses. We we uh, experience um, sin in our daily lives, but Jesus has taken it away as far as our account with Him goes. So it's as if we no longer sin, even though we still do. Of course, we still do. But again, they're all taken away. They won't be held against us because the blood of Christ has washed away all of our sins. So our sins will no longer be held against us, and we have been perfected which makes perfect sense with the fact that we have an inheritance and we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise Ephesians 1 tells us so we're guaranteed of our salvation and that's good news we don't have to worry that anything we ever do or any sin we ever commit is going to in interfere with our relationship with God and that's very encouraging so I just like to remind you and I'll probably say it in different ways in each podcast as I talk about forgiveness um, you know I just continue to uh, encourage you that you know you know that you are forgiven as a child of God and that that affects your life because the cleaner you know you are already if you you realize how clean you are it's going to affect your life choices I mean being forgiven is a, is a beautiful thing you know that you're cleansed of all your sins you know that uh, nothing you've done in the past is going to ever be brought up in the future uh, judgment Day will be beautiful, will be a time of celebration for Christians, not a time of, uh, uh, you know, uh, being punished for our sins. That would, that would be, uh, you know, that wouldn't be right, because Jesus already took our sins away. What sins? I mean, Jesus took them away, and God promised he will remember our sins no more. So what sins is he going to get us, what sins is he going to zap us for <laughs> when we get the, uh, when we go to the judgment seat of Christ? I mean, what sins is he going to get us for? Well, none, because he's already forgiven us and washed him away. So I did, you know, that, that's not entirely what I wanted to kind of talk about here, um, or not all that I wanted to talk about. I did want to talk about our identity side of this as well, which is the fact that we have been washed. We've been made clean. And so when you wash something, it's clean, right? So in this case, it's a it's a permanent effect. It's not like washing clothes, it'll get dirty again. We're actually been washed. Our spirit, our whole, our, the real us has been washed, and we have been made clean, and we're never going to be dirty again. We were once in Adam. That's when we were in. That's when we were dirty and filthy, and uh, that's when we were in sin. But now that we're in Christ, we are the righteousness of God. We have been washed and clothed with the righteousness of Christ. We've been given the righteousness of Christ as a free gift, and we've been clothed with Christ. We are clean and close, and God lives in Christ. Well, God lives in us. Christ lives in us, um, and that's good news. We are one spirit with the Lord. And that's how clean we are. We're so clean that uh, Jesus will never have to wash us again. 
It was a one-time finish work. It's a finish work and it's good news. It means that we don't need any further washing. Uh, we don't need any more sins to be forgiven. They already are. Uh, we're reminding God of sins that, that he said he wouldn't remember anymore. <laughs> so we don't have to do that, and that's that's good news. Um, we can go easy on ourselves when we, when we fall short, uh, when we sin, when we mess up. We can go easy on ourselves because... Well, I mean, God's already forgiven us of all of our sins, and uh, he, he, Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sins. He paid it in full. Um, every, every form of punishment, really, the wages of sin is death, so the ultimate punishment that we would all have to face would be death. But in Christ, Christ faced that death for us. He takes our death in our place. Um, and that's why we get to go free. We get to go scot-free. We get to go 100% forgiven uh, without any punishment for our sins because, not to say there won't be consequences on earth, of course. I mean, if you break the law, right? Uh, if you break the law, there's consequences. If you, um, you know, if you steal from people and you get caught, there's consequences. So, of course, on earth there's consequences. So, um, you know, certainly we're not encouraged to run around and sin. And forgiveness, again... The total forgiveness message doesn't promote that anyway. It actually promotes the opposite. The more clean and forgiving we realize we are, it's like, well, why do I even want to sin? I mean, I'm dead to it. I'm not alive to sin. I'm alive to God, right? And I've been forgiven of my sins. Why do I want to go back and do the very thing that Jesus had to die to forgive me for? But at the same time, there certainly has to be this place where we allow ourselves to be human and we don't, um, you know, we don't, condemn ourselves or beat ourselves or whip ourselves because we've messed up you know so it's neither one we avoid both extremes and we we live by faith in this body that's what paul said he said the life i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god and then in corinthians uh you know we walk by faith and not by sight um so and there's you know there's that kind of talk in galatians too you know living by faith and exactly what this is, you know, um, justified by faith, not uh, by grace and through faith, and not by works. Um, Galatians really all about that. You know, we don't get justified by the law; we come to Christ and get justified through Him as a free sac, a free gift of grace through Christ's sacrifice. So, yeah, we're totally forgiven children of God, and we have been washed. So, there's a couple of verses about being washed, and I just wanted to share those with you. This is pretty cool. I mean, it's just good news. I mean, even if you know you're forgiven, right? I mean, just think about how clean you are, too. That's why our identity goes perfect with this message, because you couldn't have your new identity if you weren't first forgiven, if you weren't first uh, washed, and if you didn't become a uh, born again or become a new new creation if you didn't become a christian and believe put your faith in jesus christ if nothing happened then you'd be the same old you that you used to be but we know indeed a lot did happen uh, through uh, the cross and through the resurrection of christ we find out in romans especially romans chapter 6 and 7 talks a lot about this in the fact that we died with christ we were buried crucified, buried, and raised with Christ. So we shared in the finished work of Christ. Of course, for us, it happened spiritually. To Jesus, it happened physically. Um, so the, for us, it happened spiritually. So we die, our old selves. We're, in, we're born into this planet in Adam. Um, we get crucified with Christ, so our old self at that point dies. And then we get resurrected with Christ and we become new creations. We become new at the core. We become a new self with a new heart and a new spirit. Um, that's what God promised in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. He promised that we would become a new. Uh, we would, uh, excuse me. We would have a new heart and a new spirit. God would put that new heart within us. God would put that new spirit within us. So that's where we understand that we have become new. Um, just as 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17 says, you are a new creation. If anyone is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Sorry, read the whole thing. Um, he is a new creation. Uh, 
you've been, you know, the old is gone, the new has come. I'm sorry. I don't have it in front of me, so I was going off memory there, and I had a glitch. <laughs> I had a glitch. I had the verse, and I lost it all of a sudden. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, that that's it, though. If anyone, is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has gone away, and the new has come. So that's really one verse that sort of uh, highlights the fact that we've, we were crucified, buried, and raised with Christ. We were once in Adam, now we're in Christ. We were once dirty, now we're washed. It's it's a great exchange. Uh, Jesus became sin, and we became the righteousness of God. Jesus took our sin and exchanged it by giving us His righteousness. So we got a really good deal there. <laughs> I mean, we get to we get, we give up our I mean, we lose sin, right? I mean, our our sinful selves, we lose. The, the one we used to be in Adam, the person we used to be, and we become the new creation. So, anyway, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't confuse you there. But yeah, this is the the gospel in its simplicity: is that we take on a new identity, and we receive the benefit of Christ's finished work. And that means that we're totally forgiven, we're totally clean, we're totally washed, we're totally justified, totally sanctified. All these wonderful things have happened to us. Through the, through the salvation of Jesus Christ, through the finished work of Christ. So I, I have a few minutes here left. I did want to um, share a couple specific verses on the fact that we have been washed. What does it mean to be washed? It means we're totally clean. It means we're no longer filthy. We're no longer dirty. Um, as my earlier example, if you wash clothes, right, it becomes clean. But of course, clothes can become dirty again. But once Jesus washes us with his blood, we're perfectly cleansed and we never become dirty again because this is a finished work and it's not God's the only one who can do a finished work and never have it come undone again so that's that's the good news is we're guaranteed that God cannot lie and God will not change so that's a comfort we have to know that we are washed and our ongoing sinning while we're living on earth isn't going to change the finished work of Christ. It's not going to change the fact that we're washed. It just means that, well, we're living on earth. <laughs> so, you know, we fall and stumble. We all do. All right, so first verse is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And if you look at uh, verse 11, he talks of He was just in verses 9, 10, and 11 kind of go together. But I'm just going to read verse 11 um, for the sake of time. So he finishes out his thought by saying such were some of you he was talking about people who do bad things he's talking about unbelievers who were thieves covetous revilers swindlers those types of people which we are not because we're not unrighteous we have become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so we're righteous so that list is not talking about us as, as believers it's talking about unbelievers okay so such were some of you right all all christians were once unbelievers at one point in time so that's what we were we were those things okay but now but you but you were washed but you were sanctified but you were justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and in the spirit of our god so first corinthians 6 11 that's some really good news right there see we were once dead in adam but now we're alive in christ and what happened as a result of being born again what happened when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and became saved? Well, we became washed. You were washed. And what does that mean? Well, that means we're clean. We're so clean now that Jesus lives in us. And we know that Jesus cannot coexist with sin, right? God hates sin. Uh, God will not stand for sin. God cannot be where sin is. But he can live in us because he's made us clean. So when we have sinful actions that happen out or happen externally, um, then, you know, or even if it's just a thought or whatever it is, we, we still sin in these, the point is, is the sinning happens in our bodies, in our, in our lives on earth. But our spirit, which is the deepest part of ourselves, the real us, which occupies this earth suit, the real us living inside of the body has been washed. The real you has been washed. One last scripture and I'll close out, but Titus chapter 3 uh, verses 4 through 6, you can read about this yourself. This is really the gospel right here. When the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing, here we go, by the washing of regeneration and renewing, 
by the Holy Spirit. So, how do you how do you save us? According to His mercy, according to His great love and kindness, according to His grace. Love and kindness is what is His. It's God's grace. Um, that's what love is. Is the ultimate expression of God's love is His grace, which is giving us uh, everything for nothing, basically, <laughs> and mercy, not charging anything against us that we are rightfully due to pay for. Um, the wages of sin is death. That's a debt we needed to pay. That's a debt we deserve to pay. But instead, we receive His mercy and grace, and Jesus took our death in His in our place. So, um, and that's the mercy and grace of God that, to cleanse us, to forgive us, and to wash us. But He washed us by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. So the re the power of Christ at work, the Spirit of God washing us clean, cleaning us with the blood of Christ, so that we would be clean once and for all just as Jesus perfected us once and for all just as Jesus forgave us once and for all and he will remember our sins no more so when we merge our forgiveness uh, or the our forgiveness that we received through Jesus Christ and our identity the forgiveness of God and our identity gets united together we realize that we're a beautiful child of God who has been forgiven of all of his his or her sins and we'll never have to answer for those because Jesus took them away once and for all. That doesn't cause us to be greedy and want to go sin more. And it leads us to a beautiful celebration. We're just so thankful to be in this place that no matter how many mess-ups or mishaps we have, because we just have them. We're human. We can't, we can't live perfectly in these bodies. We're just not going to. But the good news is, the good news is that even though none of us can live perfectly, we have, as a free gift through Jesus Christ, been washed, forgiven, and perfected. So we are truly clean now, and nothing we ever do is going to change that. So that's some good news. Thank you for sticking this one out. Um, I have more to talk about concerning our forgiveness and our identity. Part 4, I'll be talking about the fact that we are blameless. I hope you can join me. Thanks for joining me today. Grace and peace to you. Take care.